Hi everyone, Julie here from Discover the Universe. You might have heard recently about the star Beetlejuice. It's been in the media a lot because things are changing with Beetlejuice. There were talks that it might even explode. Anyway, there's a lot of interesting things happening and I thought it would be a good time for you to talk to your students about science in general, about this specific star, evolution of stars, things we know and things we don't know because there's a lot happening. You could also go outside and observe the star. So you can invite your students to go outside and see its changes over the next couple of weeks and months. So here's what's happening with the star Betelgeuse. So the star Betelgeuse has fainted a lot in the last few months, dropping from the 10th to the 21st position of the brightest stars in our sky. Uh, Betelgeuse is a star in the uh, Greco-Roman constellation Orion, and it's pretty easy to notice actually in the sky. So many of us who know Orion have noticed that Betelgeuse is quite a bit fainter now than it used to be. It used to be almost as bright as Rigel, which you can see in uh, this drawing of Orion here, and now it's much uh, closer in brightness to Bellatrix, uh, which is fainter. And Orion is easy to see, especially with Orion's belt, the three stars in a row that have about the same brightness. Um, so we'll come back to finding it in the sky a bit later in this video, but um, this drop in brightness has intrigued astronomers, and uh, many of us were hoping actually it was linked to the star reaching the final stages of its evolution, because that would have been very, very interesting. Let's step back in a little bit and have a look at uh, what's interesting with Betelgeuse. It is a red supergiant star. So to the eye, it is actually a little bit red. You can see it. Um, and it is a very big star. The image you see here is actually showing the disk of Betelgeuse. Most stars, when you see them with a telescope, they're still just a point of light. But Betelgeuse, we can actually see the size of its disk. And it is so big, in fact, that if you placed it at the center of the solar system where the sun is right now, it would extend all the way to the orbit of Jupiter, which means the Earth and all the other planets here would be inside the star. So just imagine how big it has to be, um, you know, compared to the Sun. The Sun would be a little dot in this image here in the center, and Betelgeuse would go all the way to Jupiter. So it is definitely a super giant star. The next step in its stellar evolution, so evolution as a star, uh, will be to explode, and that's what we call a supernova. Now, when stars go supernova, they become extremely bright. And in fact, if Betelgeuse uh, were to go supernova, it would be so bright we could see it in the daytime. That's why many of us were pretty excited about this possibility, because it would be pretty neat to see in the sky. The tricky thing, though, is that it's impossible to predict when this will happen. It could be tomorrow or it could be in 100,000 years. But we know that's going to be the next step in its evolution. Now here are two images of Betelgeuse taken by a telescope in Chile, and what's interesting is that you can actually see the difference from January 2019 to December 2019. Uh, the brightness has changed, even the shade, it seems like one part of it is darker. Um, so there's a lot going on there that we don't understand, and many scientists are currently studying Betelgeuse to better understand this specific star, but also red supergiant stars in general. Now, without going into all the details, Betelgeuse is also a variable star. That means its brightness varies with time. Uh, and we've known that for a long time, but usually the dips are not as extreme as the one right now. And that's why this one was a bit intriguing. But what's happening the last few days is that uh, Betelgeuse has started brightening again. So the dip was mostly due to the fact that it's a variable star and not so much because it will explode soon, unfortunately for many of us, but still pretty interesting to learn about. And I really invite you to go outside and observe it in the sky, try to find it and compare it with the stars Bellatrix and Rigel. And to show you how to find it in the sky, I will go and use the program Stellarium, uh, which you can easily access for free. So in Stellarium, once you have the date and the time at which you want to observe, um, it shows you the sky that's visible tonight. So here's what would be visible in southern Canada around seven at around 7 p.m. in early March. So if you look south, you will see Orion right here, this hourglass shape with Orion's belt in the center and Bellatrix and Betelgeuse at the top and then Rigel here at the bottom. So you can really compare the brightness of Betelgeuse with Rigel, which is brighter, um, and again, Betelgeuse used to be about as bright as Rigel, and now it's much closer in brightness to Bellatrix here. But before you notice these stars, if you're having a hard time finding them, you might see Sirius, because Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky, 
And to identify Sirius, actually, you can see that it, um, if you take Orion's belt, it points straight down to Sirius. And if you see something even brighter, it will most likely be Venus in the southwest or close to the western horizon. Venus these days is extremely bright in the sky. It's um, much brighter than anything else you'll see other than the moon. Um, so if you see something very bright, then look to the left of it. Eventually you'll find Sirius and you should be able to see Orion and Betelgeuse and observe it in the next few weeks, see if it changes. And that's pretty interesting. So here you go. I hope you find this subject interesting and that you will discuss it with your students. I think there's a lot of science that be can be covered with this topic right now. And I really hope you do go outside and invite your students to go outside and observe it in the real sky. Uh, it's pretty neat that they can easily observe the changes uh, in the next few months. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us and I'll see you next time.